we start with our discussion on unit 2 of advanced financial modeling and in this we are going to basically look at areas around risk management uh, for uh, for financial modeling and how can we use excel to create uh, create tools that would be useful for us in terms of risk management of portfolios in terms of simulations in terms of understanding how uh, uh, a portfolio of various assets behave right so that's the broader agenda as we start we will recap with our first idea about uh, the portfolios and portfolio theory where we say that diversification reduces the risk so we are going to model how diversification will reduce the risk right so that's that's the broader idea and if you remember for a portfolio with two assets uh, asset A and asset B where weight of asset A is WA, return of asset A is return A, weight of asset B is WB, return of asset B is WB, is return B, RB. The weighted return is given by this formula, right? That's the expected return of the portfolio. The standard deviation or the portfolio variance, however, is given by a slightly different formula. That's weight of A square, sigma of A square, plus weight of B square sigma of B square plus 2 weight of A weight of B sigma of A sigma of B that's the expansion for the term weight A sigma A plus weight B sigma B whole square but we add one more term here that's called the correlation coefficient between A and B right now this correlation coefficient basically tells you that if lower the correlation between the two stocks or two assets uh, lower this value and lower this value lower the overall portfolio variance so the risk reduces if you have a portfolio of more than one asset given that the correlation between these two assets the returns of these two assets is less than one if this term is one then this value will be highest remember correlation can always be between minus one and one so one is the highest value it can take and consequently at one we will have the highest portfolio variance right now this term which is sigma a sigma b and correlation of a b right sigma a sigma b correlation of a b is nothing but the covariance of returns of a and returns of b right that's how we calculate this so effectively if we can find the covariance of a and b that should solve the entire equation for us. So the equation changes to WA square sigma A square WB square sigma B square to WA WB covariance of returns of A and B, right? Now let's try and solve this with a portfolio that we have. So here we're given daily stock prices of three stocks over the last two years. We have stocks of DLF, Aishar and Hindalco, right? We're going to copy these three and paste it here and we're trying to find the returns of this set so we're going to say merge and center and say type returns there how do I find returns returns are current price minus previous price divided by previous price so that's the return we can convert it to percentages I can drag it on the right side and copy so the entire set of returns for the stocks of DLF Aishar and Hindalco are calculated right this data is available with us now now we can use this to go ahead and look at maybe the returns right so I can find out the average return how do I find the average return I can use the function average and calculate the average for these stocks right so that's the daily average remember how do I annualize this so annual average now when you annualize something that is getting compounded when you annualize something that is getting compounded remember that if you are getting 1% interest a month then at the end of the month your portfolio will be worth this much right 1% return a month will give you this much so if you continue doing this in the next month you'll get another 1 plus 1% and then 1 plus 1% 1 
So annually, the number would become 1 plus 1 percent raised to the power 12, right? So when you compound, you are going to raise it to the power 12. In the case of stocks, in the case of stocks, we have daily returns. So ideally, we should take 1 plus whatever the daily return is, raised to the power the number of days. Now, number of days here is the trading days because you don't get returns on Saturdays and Sundays. Right, so number of trading days in the year is about 250. So daily return raised to the power 250 and minus one, because we had added one here, will give us the final annualized return value compounded. Right, so the daily return plus one raised to the power 250, 250 because there are 250 trading days in the year, minus one is going to give me the return. So let's do that. This is equals to 1 plus the daily average raised to the power 250 minus 1. And that's what gives us the annual compounded average for these three stocks. Right? Can I find the risk? So I can find the daily standard deviation and I'll write that as STDEV because we can use a function called ev.p and in earlier versions there is no dot it's stdevp but we could use any of those and that's the daily that's the daily standard deviation that we get how do i annualize the standard deviation so in finance, all functions work on variance. What is variance? Variance is nothing but the square of standard deviation, right? So now that you have the square of standard deviation, so if I was to find annual variance, so annual variance is nothing but daily variance into 250, right? This can be written as standard deviation square into 250, right? And if I want to find out annual standard deviation, I have to take the square root of this, which will work out to be standard deviation into square root of 250. So daily standard deviation multiplied by square root of 250 is going to basically give me my annual standard deviation. So annual STDEV is going to be the daily one multiplied by square root of 250 and that's the annual standard deviation we get. It might also make sense to just find out the daily variance as well which is nothing but standard deviation square right and let's actually just put it in this format I'm just going to increase this and increase this okay so that's the daily standard deviation that we get daily variance that we get for these uh, these stocks right now let's create a stock with weightages let's create a portfolio where DLF has 40 percent weight 40 percent weight and iShare has 60 percent weight right so weight of a into return of A plus weight of B into return of B. So average, so for the portfolio, average return is going to be 40% into the annualized average of, of uh, BLF plus 60% into the annualized average of iShare. So that's what is expected by the portfolio over this period right now when you calculate the standard deviation that's where the trick comes now so here what we're going to do is we're going to create a small matrix we're going to say DLF and Aisher and we're going to say DLF and Aisher and what we are going to do is we are basically going to find the covariance so we are trying to find out 
the covariance of an asset with as with another asset right and the intersection points are the covariance of that row and column so in this cell i am finding the covariance of dlf with dlf in this cell i am finding the covariance of dlf with iisher in this cell i'm going to find the covariance of iisher with dlf and in this cell i'm going to find the covariance of iisher with iisher right that's what we're going to do so now the formula is covariance p in earlier version versions of excel the formula is covar we could use any one of those covar or covariance p we'll use covar here and i have to select the data of dlf first and then select the data for iisher right and press enter and we get the covariance for sorry in the first case i have to select the data for dlf and dlf so it's e8 to e500 in the second case it's covar of dlf with iisher so i'm going to use the dlf returns comma the iisher returns in the third case it is covar of iisher with dlf so i'm first going to put in the iisher returns and then going to put the dlf returns and then finally i'm going to look at covar of iisher with iisher so that's my iisher with the same data right that's what we choose now let's put an equal set of decimal points in all these and let's see what we realize here what we see here interestingly is that look at the shaded values look at the shaded values covariance of dlf with dlf covariance of dlf with itself is the same as variance of dlf is the same as variance of dlf returns so covariance of the dlf returns with itself is the same as variance of dlf returns covariance of iisher returns with itself is the same as variance of iisher returns right the other thing we realize is covariance of dlf with iisher is the same as covariance of iisher with dlf so covariance of a b is the same as covariance of b a right once we are done with this we are now at a point where we can extend this ahead remember we already have the covariances i can also put the weights here so that's th that's 40% what's the weight of dlf that's 40% and the weight of iisher is 60% i can copy and paste this here and now i can use this entire set to calculate what is going to be the portfolio variance i'm going to delete this and now each cell is going to be the multiplication of the covariance with the weights that are corresponding so this cell will become 40% into 40% into the covariance this cell will become 60% into 40% into the covariance here we are going to do 60 into 40 into the covariance and here we are going to do 60 into 60 into the covariance now note the terms what you see here this term is weight of dlf square into the variance which is sigma of dlf square this term is weight of iisher square into variance of iisher which is sigma square so weight square sigma square weight square sigma square this is weight of dlf into iisher into weight of iisher into covariance and this is weight of iisher into dlf into covariance so effectively there are four terms that you see in a two asset portfolio and the terms that correspond here are the diagonal terms when you see this asset 
the ones marked in cross are weight of a square sigma of a square weight of b square sigma of b square and the ones marked with star are w a w b covariance and because that comes twice you put two here so the sum of this entire set of data that we get the sum of all these four values is going to give me the portfolio variance this is the variance and standard deviation of the portfolio is the square root of variance this remember is the daily variance that we are looking at right daily standard deviation that we are looking at the daily standard deviation for the portfolio is 2.07 percent that for DLF was 3.3 and Aishar was 2.1 so effectively we have created a portfolio which has lesser standard deviation than both the stocks individually and that exactly is what we mean by the benefit of diversification right so we have created a portfolio which has exact standard deviation that is lesser than the individual standard deviation 3.25 and 2.09 percent of the two stocks that's diversification for us so uh, that's basically what we do with a two asset portfolio in our next section we're going to extend this to a three asset portfolio as we end this section a couple of quick questions what is the covariance of an assets return with itself and in a two asset portfolio how many terms will there be in the covariance matrix thank you